Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina suratal mustaqim Suratal lazina an'amta alayhim Ghairil mawdubi alayhim Waladdalin amin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Rabbi syurah li sadri wa yassir li amri Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Rabbi zidni ilman warzukni fahman Oh Allah increase me in knowledge and true understanding Amin Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I am Ida Murdi Jamari from YMS Edutech Learning Hub InsyaAllah, we help students to improve in math and science by two grades in less than three months. So Alhamdulillah, today we are streaming live again. And today is our first additional math lesson. So please share this video with those students who will be sitting for their GCEN as well as GCEO level in 2018 for their additional math exam. And this video is also um, suitable for secondary three students. Okay, some of you have already received your um, confirmed subjects. So if you'll be sitting for additional or if you'll be learning additional math next year, so this video is suitable for you. Because what will I be covering throughout the whole of November is just on sets. Okay, it's just on sets. So this is something like something basic. Okay, that you can easily grasp or digest. All right. So for the GCN as well as GCO level students, this will be a recap for you. Okay. So sets is what I'm going to cover for the whole of November. All right. So first, before we look at what are some of sets problems, let us take a look at the definition of two types of numbers. So first. Let's look at rational numbers. What are rational numbers? So rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed in a fraction form like this. A out of B. Okay? Whereby A and B are integers and B cannot be equal to zero. Alright, so these are rational numbers. So let's just list down some examples. Okay, so it is good that when you revise, okay, you draw it up on a mind map like this so you can see the big picture of what you will be covering. Okay, so you have definition, you have exam examples of definition, and then you have examples of questions. Alright, okay, so example of rational numbers will be whole numbers such as 2. Simple fractions such as half and decimals involving decimals such as 0 0.75. So these are rational numbers because they can they can be expressed into a fraction form like this, where a and b are integers. And what are integers? Integers are whole numbers, positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, as well as zero. Okay, and b cannot be equal to zero, right? Because anything divided by zero will give you error. So let's just do this. 9 divided by 0 is equal to math error. Okay. Let me just do that one more time. 9 divided by 0 equals to math error. Okay? Alright. So that's rational numbers for you. Okay. Opposite of rational will be irrational. So what are irrational numbers so basically they are numbers that cannot be expressed in fraction form like this so then how do we present irrational numbers irrational numbers can be presented using the radical symbol or the root symbol and this is what we call sets all right these are what we call sets so example of sets will be root of 2. So let's just do that quickly. Root of 2 equals. 
So you see, you have a string of numbers after the decimal point. All right, so this is an irrational number. Okay, so next, what are properties of irrational numbers? So properties of irrational numbers, there are three of them. Okay, so the first one is this. It involves multiplication. So if I have root of A multiplied by multiply by root of B, I can combine my A and B together to form this, root of A, B. So that is the first property of sets. All right. Second property is very similar to this, it involves division. So root of A, out of root of B is equivalent to root of A over B or root of A out of B. Okay? And the third property or the last property of sets is this root of A multiplied by root of A. root of A multiplied by root of A will give us A. That's it. So these are three properties of sets that you must know. You must know them by heart. Okay, because it will come in handy when it comes to solving questions. Alright. Okay, so now let's take a look at questions. Okay. I'm going to do two questions. Alright, so the first question is something simple. Let's say we have this root of 13 squared. So what is root of 13 squared? So first and foremost, I'm going to separate this into root of 13 multiplied by root of 13. Okay, next, you ask yourself, is 13 is 13 a perfect square number? If yes, you should split it into its factors. But if not, just like this, root of 13 is an irrational number. So you leave it as it is. But then, compare this to property number 3. Okay, property number 3 states, root of A multiplied by root of A is equal to A. Meaning to say, if you have root of 13 multiplied by root of 13, you will get... 13 as the answer. Okay, simple. So this is property 3. You get this from property 3. Okay, so you can practice on your own, take out your textbook, find similar question to this, and then you just practice. Okay, second example. Ready for the second example? Let's say you have root of 32. So you ask yourself, is 32 a perfect square number? It is not. However, can you split 32? Is 32 a prime number just like 13? 13 is a prime number, so you cannot factorize it further except itself and 1. Okay, however, 32 can be split into various factors. Okay, let's just list down the factors of 32. So you will have 1 multiplied by 32. You have 2 multiplied by 16. And you have 4 multiplied by 8. Alright, so which factors will you choose to help you solve this question? Okay, so you must choose factors that are perfect square number. Okay, so let's look at the first one. 1 is a perfect square number, but 32 is not. However, you cannot use this again because it will just go back to 32. Okay, it's just it just means 32. So we're not going to use this. Can't cross it out. Okay, next you have 2 and 16. So 2 is not a perfect square number. However, 16 is. So you can use these factors. Do you understand? 
Okay, 4 is a perfect square number, however, 8 is not. Okay, so you can still use this. Then you may ask, so which one do I choose? Alright, okay, just for this lesson, I'm going to show you both. But let's say during test or exam, if let's say you do not know which one to choose, and if your brain cannot work, it, work out which one will give you a shorter steps, it doesn't matter, you can just choose any one of this. You will still end up having the same answer. Alright? Okay, let's just do this one first. 2 multiplied by 16. So over here, I will have root of 2 multiplied by 16. So root of 2 multiplied by 16, this is the same as property number 1. Can you see here? Root of A multiplied by root of B will give you root of A, B. So just like this. So meaning to say you can split this into root of 2 multiplied by root of 16. Alright? Okay, next. Root of 2. Just now we have already seen that root of 2 is an irrational number. So imagine you are communicating or you are talking to someone who is being irrational. Someone whose emotion is not stable. Okay, so they are being irrational. What do we usually do to this kind of people? Do we argue back? Because there's no point in doing that. So usually what we do is we will just not talk to the person or we just ignore the person. Okay, so same goes with irrational number. If you see an irrational number, what you do is you just ignore. Okay, don't bother. Ignore. Alright? So leave it as root 2 and root of 16 will give us 4. Okay? So we can combine these two together and present our answer as... 4 multiplied by root 2. Ta-da! That's it. Okay, some students like to ask me. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Okay, so you leave it as this. Okay? Okay, next. So just now I already mentioned that I will use both uh, factors to show you in this working, right? Okay, let's use 4 multiplied by 8, okay? So if you have root 32, you can split it into root of 4 multiplied by 8. Again, this looks like property 1. So you're going to split that into root 4 multiplied by root 8. Can you square root 4? Yes. So that will give us 2. Can you square root 8? Cannot. But wait a minute. Can 8 be further factorized? Yes. So that will give us root of 2 multiplied by 4. Okay. So we have 2 multiplied by, again, this looks like property 1. I can split these two factors to form this. Root of 2 multiplied by root of 4. So I will have... 2 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by 2. Okay, so now I can combine 2 and 2 together. So that will give me 4 multiplied by root 2. That's it. Okay, so see, eventually you will arrive at the same answer. It's just that this requires longer steps. Alright, so let's say during exam, if let's say your brain cannot work out quickly which one will give you a shorter step, that's okay. You have plenty of time during exam, okay? As long as you are focused, okay, inshallah, you should be able to finish your paper within the time limit, alright? So just do it slowly, step by step, slowly, okay? Alright, so as homework, what you need to do is okay, draw a mind map like this whereby you have the definition of rational numbers, irrational numbers, give examples, okay, 
and then write down the properties and make sure you know these three properties because it comes in handy when it comes to solving questions like this. Okay, so yep, that's all for today's first lesson. Something light, something easy for you to digest, but make sure you practice, okay? Because if you just watch, then you will not be able to master it yourself. You need to get your hands dirty, you need to practice, okay? Especially during the holidays, you have ample time to do your revision, all right? So please revise at least two hours per day, at least at least two hours per day, okay? So that when school reopen, you, you will feel that learning can be a breeze, okay? So um, just to share, how, how do good students get good results is because they do these three simple steps, okay? So before the lesson, what they do is they will preview the materials. Okay, they know that okay, tomorrow teacher is going to cover on set. So what they will do is they will before they go to sleep, they just take out a textbook. They will look through the lesson objective because usually, um, in our textbook, it it will state some statements what you will learn from that topic. Okay, so what students good students will do is that they will look through these objectives, look through the examples. They may not understand initially. That's okay. This is what we call preview or this is what we call priming your brain okay so preview so during lesson when they go to class they focus they pay attention in class if they have questions they ask questions all right and then after that when they go home they review again what they have learned in school okay so learning doesn't stop just in school you need to go home and do your homework or if there's no homework you need to go home and go through the examples that your teacher have gone through in class Okay, so these three simple steps, preview, focus, and review. Okay, so these are the three simple steps that every student should do. So inshallah, you should be able to do well, inshallah. Okay, so that's all from me today. First lesson of our additional math. For those of you who wish to register for a free trial lesson, we have two branches, one in Pongol and one in Icon at Changi. Okay. To register for a free trial lesson, you may do so at bit.ly slash YMS2018 registration. I have included the link to accompany this live streaming video. You can just simply click on the link and register for a free trial lesson. Okay, so that's all from me today. Inshallah, I'll see you next week, whereby I will cover on certs involving addition and subtraction. Okay, so I'm Ida Murni Jamari from YMS EduTech Learning Hub. Hurry to success. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.